Arnold to this day continues to inspire millions of young guys to work on themselves. We all have asked ourselves a question, how can I have a chest like Arnold's? How to build such arms? Naively overestimating our own natural potential, we could think to ourselves, if I continue working out the way he does, I will achieve the same results. You probably know that one shouldn't think of it this way. But you may still be wondering whether Arnold's workout plan makes sense in today's world. And can a natural who works out this way achieve results, or does it mean literally the worst decision in years to him? I will answer both questions in today's video, so stay tuned. From the very beginning of bodybuilding in the late 1800s, the workout methods have been evolving intensely. Yugen Sandow or Bobby Pandur were proponents of using weights like six-pound dumbbells. It was believed back then that the best way to achieve this kind of physique is the maximum tensing of muscles, whereas the weight only served a supporting role. Of course, they also performed heavy gymnastic or calisthenic exercises and lifted heavy weights. The workout methods popular at the time, however, were very original compared to today. Since the days of the first bodybuilders, the approach to building a physique has been getting perfected. The progress in the topics of diet, workout, and doping has caused physiques to grow. The 70s was the, the golden era of the iron sport, which was accompanied by the most iconic versions of Arnold Schwarzenegger's musculature available to see on the stage. The one most pointed at is from 1974. That was when Arnold was defending his title for the sixth time. He left perfectly complete, massive, and at the same time, well cut. In the pose with biceps in the front, a great separation can be seen, including the lower parts. The best bodybuilders of that era were gathered around the Gold's Gym. That was where all the big names would hang out, Schwarzenegger, Zane, Franco Colombo. When it comes to the workout methods popular at the time, it was the era of crazy volumes. When reading the plans of the best competitors of the day, one can sometimes be under impression that the general assumption was, the more, the better. Bodybuilders would show up at the gym two times a day, spending a few hours there each time. In his autobiography, Schwarzenegger writes that he would spend five hours a day on exercises. I put my best effort to make sure that the Arnold's plan presented here is the authentic Schwarzenegger's plan from his golden days. The most credible plan that I was able to find goes as follows. Arnold would divide muscle groups into two groups. Group A included the major areas, chest, back, legs, and he also added forearms in there. Group B was the smaller muscle groups, arms, shoulders, forearms, calves, abdomen. He would work out each group three times a week, so as is easy to calculate, he had six workout days every week. Each of these days, he would do two sessions, morning and afternoon. And so, when it comes to group A, he would tackle chest and back in the morning, then legs in the afternoon. In group B, the morning session included arms and shoulders exercises, and the afternoon session calves and abdomen. Some of the plans indicate that he worked out his abdomen and calves every day. As for me, the whole thing looks a little like a good prison workout plan. When you have nothing else to do, 5-hour workouts a day is a good way to kill time. On top of that, the only other thing you do is eat and sleep, which makes the regeneration go on full blast. Unless you're watching this video from a prison, I assume that you don't have the kind of comfort to afford devoting 5 hours a day to your strength hobby. And let's take into account that 5 hours is just the workout alone. Add to that driving to the gym, getting dressed, etc. Working out according to Arnold's plan would soon become a full-time job. So even if I were to tell you right now that it is the best plan under the sun, you would likely not decide to use it if you want to have any life outside of work and gym. Of course, depending on the source, the specific workouts will differ from each other. However, each time when we calculate the total number of series, we will get a truly crazy volume. For example, we would have to take 26 series on the chest during one workout, which means 78 a week. The back, 63 series a week. Legs would also be 63, while the biceps, for example, would be 48. This madness could above all else be explained by the fact that the golden era bodybuilders would match this volume with intensity. This means that the only actually heavy series until muscle collapse would be the last series or the last two. In such situation, it lowers the amount of work at maximum capacity significantly. Assuming only the last series until muscle collapse, we would actually have not 78 but 15 series to the max for the chest. Secondly, they say that this kind of plan was only used by him periodically when 
and directly preparing for competitions. During the off-season period, he recommended a different approach for building mass, which covered four sessions a week. In such split, he would work out his legs, chest and abdomen on Mondays and Thursdays, shoulders, back and abdomen on Tuesdays and Fridays. The fifth day was devoted to the outlying muscle group, which he would prioritize in that particular time. In such case, we have 20 series for the chest a week, which seems like a reasonable and optimal volume. While doing some research for this material, I ran into an interesting channel that focuses on old-school workouts, run by Peter Kacharian. He published a material in which he showed his 10-year progress, which he achieved by following the Arnold Schwarzenegger's plan. He mentions that at certain point he literally hopped from an approach that assumes exercising every group once a week to the described before Schwarzenegger's crazy six-day plan. For the first few months, he couldn't recover after workout sessions and he practically walked around sore all the time. It was only after a long time when his body started to adapt and he started seeing results. However, he decided that it was too much volume to effectively build muscle mass and he modified the approach into one similar to the above described Arnold's four-day split. Let's get to the point. Should you as a natural work out with Arnold's six-day plan? The answer is simple. No. Don't do 80 series on the chest a week. Don't engage your shoulders six times over seven days. For one thing, because in my opinion, it is better to have a life outside the gym. The bodybuilders back then didn't have a very good understanding of the significance of recovery in making progresses. Also take into account that they weren't naturals, which also makes all the difference when it comes to recovery, for example. What will be good on the other side? Increasing the volume is certainly a good solution for those with a long workout experience who are no longer seeing any improvements. A good idea in such case would be to count the qualitative series performed for specific muscle groups during a week, and if they don't want to grow, there is a huge chance that you are simply not devoting enough time to them. I myself was surprised by the fact that certain publications showed a very good effectiveness of very high volumes, so it looks like the volume does make a difference. Another thing I like about Arnold's plans is that he tackles muscle groups two, three times a week. These days, when you look at the best bodybuilders' plans, you will usually notice that they exercise each muscle once a week. If you are a natural, this may not be the best approach. Bodybuilders have enormous muscles, which is why it makes sense in their case to do 20 series for a bicep in a session. When someone is starting with tiny arms, on the other hand, there is no point torturing them with such volume. A smaller amount of work after which the muscle will recover faster is enough. That's why you don't have to wait 7 days to work out your arms again. After just 2-3, they will likely be ready to work and you can provide them with a new growth stimulus. It is also a good idea to focus on the basic heavy exercises. They are what builds the most muscles. On top of that, if you are a natural, you will be interested in the hormonal response to a workout in form of a testosterone spike. And the more muscle groups you engage, the bigger that response will be. Last but not least, the Arnold's methods that remain relevant to this day include drop sets, super series, or focusing on muscle sensation. In conclusion, don't repeat Arnold's plan one to one, but by all means, do take what's good from it. Muscle group workout frequency, heavy exercises, intensity increasing methods, and focusing on muscle sensation. And when developing the plan itself, make sure it is fun to you. If some exercise doesn't suit you, replace it with one that you enjoy. Because at the end of the day, you're supposed to follow it for the rest of your life. You are much more likely to give up on something you don't like than what you do with a smile on your face.